could try to play it, but you're never gonna beat me Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy Bloody hands stain from the people who deceive me Bloody hands break through the chains, go free me Hello, I'm Ava, and this is Authorella. Thank you for joining me. For any of you who have seen uh, my previous videos, I had a green screen up, but because of the way the lighting in my room is, I couldn't really make that work <laughs> um, with the corner and the shadows and the um, this house is really old and I don't have a ceiling light. All I've got is a wall light and it just wasn't working with the shadows and everything. So I decided to just cut the green screen out and leave it with bare wall. So I'm going to be adding decor as I go, but I did, the first thing I added was, um, there was some stuff I bought uh, on Halloween. Um, actually, it was right after, the day after, it was a uh, clearance sale. And because my first video dealt with Greg Locke's witch hunt, I decided in honor of Pastor Greg Locke, I would add this decor first. Um, as I go, I will start adding more things, but for right now, we've got these, um, and they're just kind of a, something I threw together. I, they'll probably end up looking better when I, as I go on and add other things. Um, and of course, then there's Wilbur, George, and, you know, my grandma pirate there. And so I'm not a witch. I, I've mentioned that before. I am a neo-pagan. Um, I have a belief in a religion called atheism. But I'm not going to get into that today. Today I want to delve a little bit more into my past. I kind of mentioned some things in my other videos that I have up. One of them is the harm and that I believe purity culture does to children, especially young girls. I've seen a lot lately uh, on Lori Alexander's channel through um, him at Meta on Twitter and through uh, Mr. Atheist Jimmy Snow. I've watched a lot of his videos. And every time I see anything with Lori Alexander and the transformed wife and a little bit less or so with Girl Defined, and Paul and Morgan, it just, it gives me like this feeling in the pit of my stomach and kind of brings all that back, all that trauma that I suffered as a child back um, with all the things my mother told me and put on me. So I'm going to kind of go into how purity culture caused harm in my, my personal life and this whole you know, not having sex till you get married and people will feel about you if you do um, and how and what men are as far as um, how they behave and what their nature is. I remember when I was probably five, six years old, Wonder Woman was a big thing and I was obsessed with a Wonder Woman as a child. I broke, I actually broke my arm um, pretending like I was Wonder Woman and I ended up, you know, jumping off something and I broke my, it was my left arm um, right around my elbow in a couple of places. So I was completely obsessed with that. And then I found out saw in a commercial that they came, I think it was a commercial, but it might have been at the store, that they came out with Wonder Woman underoos. And I begged my mom for a pair for Christmas. And she went and she bought them for me. And I was ready to put on the uniform and become Wonder Woman. And she said, the only thing is, you don't wear these out of your room. If you're not wearing your clothes over them, you don't wear them out of your room. Okay. I was like six. And of course I did because, you know, my room wasn't that big and I wanted to, you know, run all over and pretend. And I came out and she spanked me. And afterwards she says, don't you ever do that because that's a temptation to your father because men can't control themselves when it comes to seeing a, a woman or a girl, they can't control their sexual urges. 
or she just said their urges and you don't want to be the reason why your dad sins my father I had to worry at six years old that my father if I did certain things would hurt me that way and the thing is my father would never do something like that my father wouldn't even hug me and I have a feeling looking back and knowing what I know now that the reason why my father was never affectionate with me and never really had wanted to have anything to do with me until I was much older was because of my mother's feeling about men and they can't control themselves do you, can you imagine I mean what kind of message does that send to young girls when they the first man at that age they shouldn't even have to be worrying about something like that that shouldn't even be something they think about you know stranger danger and all that but you don't have to go into detail but to be told that your own father will you if you wear certain things not only is that victim blaming but that gives a young girl such a sense of what Christians believe men are and that's you know looking at that now that's insulting to men as well that you know if a if under certain circumstances that men will do this and it's all a woman's fault that they do or a girl's fault it's absolutely ridiculous and then as I got older my mom would never allow me to be in a room with any kind of male um, with the door shut my nephew who was three years younger than me we were playing army under my bed when I was four and he had just turned two I was almost five and she dragged me out from under there under her bed and she beat me with a belt and accused me of doing something of you know doing something naughty with him and I had no clue what she was talking about and I kept telling her I didn't I didn't I didn't and she kept beating me and telling me I know you're lying I mean my mother was so worried about sex and sexual oppression she caught me all children explore themselves at a young age um, or most do I'm not gonna say all but most do and they don't even know it's anything they don't know what that means they're just trying to figure out their own bodies she caught me doing that and she told me that every time you do that that your name is in the book of life and that Jesus keeps and every time you do that it blots out a piece of your name and when your entire name is blotted out then when you stand in front of Jesus on Judgment Day he will look at you and say depart from me I never knew you and this was when I was four five six seven years old and so every time that my mom would walk away from me in a grocery store or whatever I thought that Jesus came back and left me behind because I was such a terrible sinner and I couldn't I would try to give myself to Jesus and I was told that you'll feel that that power that thing that wash over you when Jesus comes into your heart and I could never feel that just free clean spirit my mom told me I would get so I thought because of what I did Jesus had already rejected me and I was going to hell and I got into as a teenager I got into drugs and I got into one night stands once I got into drugs and I tried to commit suicide twice in one year and I would latch on to anybody who gave me the slightest bit of attention the first time I I was with this one 
um, guy when I was 19. And we dated for about a month. After a week, he started talking about getting married. And I thought, oh, he's going to marry me. He's going to marry me. We ended up having sex. And I cried. <laughs> After we had sex, I cried because I thought, he's going to leave me now because I did this. Because he's going to think there's, you know, I'm impure and he's not going to want me. My first marriage, my husband was abusive. I mean, I knew this guy for 15 days. He was in the military and we would see each other when he'd come home. And after we had sex the first time, he kept coming back. At first, he didn't talk to me for, I mean, I'd write him every day after that. And he didn't write me back. So I thought, well, he broke up with me. So I moved on and started seeing somebody else and he comes back he's like no I never said I broke up with you and that turned out to be a horrible idea I ended up marrying him and it was because he was the first guy that I had sex with that actually wanted to marry me so I thought well I better take my chance now because nobody else will do this because I was taught from a young age that that was the goal of a woman was to get married and have children and I thought, I'm never going to have this. So I was going to latch on to the first guy who would give me that. And it was such a mistake. And we were only married for a year, um, not even a year before we separated. I went into the Army myself, to the National Guard, and I went into training. And that's when I met my present husband. And he was getting a divorce from his wife when we met. Um, they just split up. And he's like, I wouldn't want to be with a virgin. That's ridiculous. Virgins don't know what they're doing. And I had already started to pull away a, a lot from getting away from my parents and their influence completely for a while. I already started pulling away. <coughs> and I told my mother during, and one of the reasons why was because I told my mother about an incident that happened with my first husband and basically she told me, well, you're married and you're supposed to stay together forever. You made a promise in front of God. And so that promise has to keep. And what I told her had happened was pretty bad. And I thought, your God wants me to stay in this kind of relationship. Why? And so when I got to my um, advanced training in Virginia I talked to her uh, one day after I'd met um, after I'd met my husband and I said well I've got this new friend and she goes well you just remember you're married and you remember the promise you made to God and I said seriously you're still harping on that well you know you can't break that up and so I I hung up on her and every time I would call back after that I would if she answered the phone I'd just say let me talk to dad I don't want to talk to you she'd try to talk to me I said either let me talk to dad or I'm hanging up and I think that more than anything that was the start of me saying enough I found this man who didn't care about my past who didn't care about the things I did and actually appreciated that I had a past and said that that's part of who what made me who I am and loved me for who I was and loved me for even everything that I'd done that I thought were mistakes and he said I don't think they're mistakes because if you didn't do them they wouldn't have you wouldn't be the person you are for the first time I didn't feel like an already shoot up piece of gum and I remember saying even back then though a few times and he'd always shut me shut the argument down I'd say I wish I could have been a virgin and he's like I don't I I don't want to have to teach somebody how to do things you already know and it was so different than what I had been raised to believe that men would be that men were when I, I got pregnant, um, 
with my with our oldest but just a couple of months after we moved in together and my mom was really upset about that she wouldn't they came to visit us and she wouldn't even stay in our house because she wasn't going to stay with somebody who was living in sin and because it was condoning that but I got pregnant and I was always taught that you have sex with your husband no matter what unless it's that time of the month because you know the bible says not to do that but any other time outside that whenever your husband wants you have sex with him that's your job and i was just during my first pregnancy i was i had i experienced morning sickness all day long anything would set me off into vomiting and i thought you know I was feeling a little better that day. I don't remember how far into it it was, but I remember one day I was feeling a little better, but I still wasn't feeling great. And I was tired. And my husband, my fiance at the time, he kissed me on the neck and I was like, oh, okay, well, well why don't we go in the bedroom? And he said, are you sure? Because you don't seem to be feeling very good still. I said, yeah, yeah, uh, we can if that's what you want. He goes, yeah, but what do you want? I said, it's not up to me what I want. It's if that's what you want, then that's what we'll do. And he says, honey, I never, I never want you to feel like you're obligated to do that. I never want you to do that unless it's something you want. And I thought, wow, it was I'd never even knew men like that existed. And it just deepened my love and my feelings for him. And I mean, it was such a difference in what I was always raised to believe and the way it should have been that I never wanted to put that on my children. And I don't think anybody should put that on their daughters. Even up until just a few weeks ago I, I have a lot of health problems um, I'm diabetic I have neuropathy and I've had to have a hysterectomy uh, in 2015 so my drive is pretty low and I kind of took advantage of that you don't have to if you don't want to because honestly my drive is pretty much non-existent anymore um, and of course my husband's like you know it would be nice every once in a while more than you know to spend time like that together more than a couple of times a year so we got into this argument and we ended up uh i decided all right well well i understand what you're saying and you're right it, it's not fair of me to not even try at least occasionally and we we're spending time together and he said, you know, this is what I need. We don't even have to have sex. You don't even have to touch me. I just need to feel closeness. He says, if we don't do anything more than this, it's fine. And I broke down crying because I thought that mindset, that, that thing I was taught back when I was just five, six years old, that that's all men really want stuck with me even through all these years with my husband that there was still part of me that looked at him and said well you know that's all you want from me and this was just a couple of weeks ago I am almost 49 years old this year and I'm still dealing with the fallout of purity culture and Christian guilt when it comes to sex is some of the things my dad did messed me up pretty bad but at least at least I had one parent and I didn't know it until I was older because of the way my mother was I didn't know that I had one parent who would always somewhat be in my corner about you know what you're still my child and I still love you and not sit there and try to push Jesus down my throat constantly and this isn't a thing where a lot of people say well atheists 
and people who change the religion from Christianity just hate God and want to sin. It's a stupid thing. It has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with my personal journey of finding out who I am and in what I believe. And I don't want to believe in a God who is that cruel, who could give, especially for children, give them such a horrible sense of self-worth. Women in that religion and young girls in that religion, especially the deep evangelicals, it gives you, it's designed to keep women oppressed and to keep them from being anything more than what the men want them to be. And these men take this privilege and want to, they see themselves losing it, so they fight against it tooth and nail. And it's that way about anything to do with that religion. But the fact that women like Lori Alexander promote this is just sad. And I look at some of the horrid things Lori Alexander says, and, you know, she's a teacher of women. That's what she calls herself. And she's a victim too, but she has done so much to push that that narrative that I just have a hard time feeling sorry for her. It's how brainwashed she is. Because as much as I kind of feel sorry for her that she believes this, the fact that she's putting this on other people, I kind of see that as an unforgivable thing for me. I, I think that when she dies, she'll have a lot to answer for. And I'm not saying eternity because I don't believe in an eternity in hell. But I think that there will be some punishment in line for putting that out there and making young women and girls feel the same way I did. That it, your happiness doesn't matter that God doesn't care about your happiness. He just cares about your husband's because that's your job. All you are is there to please your husband. Wow. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a pretty bad thing to tell young women because it's, and if they mess up, that they're going to end up in situations that could be harmful to them. It causes real harm and I am my life was a perfect example of that well anyway I have gone long enough um that's all I have for today but thank you for joining me feel free to leave a comment if you do about this I mean I would love to hear your stories too if you have gone through something similar because I think the more stories that come out about those feelings and what that does the more we expose how bad this really is. And I would appreciate any comment either way. You know, I, I will do my best to try to be civil even to those who disagree with me. But yeah, um, leave a comment, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell if you'd like to see more content like this. And have a blessed day. Looking for change, looking for pain Pulling a mob, pushing a train I'll never stop, stick to a lane Pick up the pieces and go rearrange uh, I'll be the best above all the rest Put me to the test and uh, Expect nothing less, you check as I'm chess What's happening next, yeah You got the venom, a tangible weapon No coming in 